everyone Church of SDFU I'm just trying to a little green screen set up I'm not gonna put anything on today I don't have the time but I'll probably try to get around to it tomorrow um, today I just want to talk about a little analogy that kind of I saw that while I was uh, out for a run today um, about comparing uh, unregulated free market capitalism to a somehow regulated managed alternative and it could be a managed market system um, or it could be a different alternative say like a democratic economy whatever um, but it could still be some form of managed capitalism let's say and my analogy I was on a run so it involves two runners um, very imaginative um, and so one of these runners represents the capitalist system, uh, unregulated, and the other runner represents some regulated alternative. And how I would compare these two would be, um, in a human being, obviously, we have regulatory systems that regulate how our whole body functions. And when we exert ourselves, for example, the system regulates us consciously by causing us pain and discomfort when we are exceeding the tolerance somewhere. Um, and it, it also regulates unconsciously by um, adjusting how much, how many resources in terms of air and so on, heat, uh, it provides to the different organs. Um, so, for example, uh, when the brain is... Um, when the human body doesn't have enough oxygen it's going to basically shut down everything else before it shuts down the brain uh, because brain is imp most important so brain needs to keep going um, and so our two competitors the regulated fella is the guy that has all of these mechanisms in place um, the unregulated fella is the one that doesn't uh, for some reason either by birth or maybe he took some kind of drug to suppress that because he thought he could perform better if he doesn't if he's not regulated by these lim artificial limitations how he considers them um, so he doesn't have any of these regulatory um, things in his body he can basically go whatever performance level he chooses um, and he won't be stopped by his body from doing so and neither will will um, some part of his body try to cut off uh, uh, blood supply or oxygen supply to his to his legs say while he's running so he can be really competitive right so these two runners they start the race the regulated fella he starts off fast he notices he's getting out of breath he notices his energy levels are not great he's having a harder time and so he kind of adjusts his body adjusts and he adjusts um, because he's aware that if he keeps going at this pace uh, then he can't actually finish the race so he drops back a little bit he's still with the pack still doing well the capitalist runner um, starts full sprint he, in his mind every second he has to just be as competitive as possible in that second um, so he's just thinking about the immediate future everything else is really not important he's not really thinking about the goal line what he's thinking is if I'm as competitive as I can be this second and as competitive as I can be next second and I just do that for the rest of the track then I'm gonna win anyways right so it's all as simple as that so he goes full speed ahead and as he starts going in his sprint you know this is a marathon um, and so after a couple of hundred meters he really starts getting winded uh, he, he runs out of oxygen um, his heart is going way too fast and normally now his body would force him to slow down it would basically not allow him and his organs themselves would would regulate down to try to prevent um, him from overexerting himself and injuring himself so obviously you can get a heart attack if you run too fast but usually that's only when you're older and your heart's already a bit iffy when you're young you know yes you can still drop dead of heat exhaustion but your body really tries to regulate down but his isn't doing that because he's shut all of that off so as he runs faster and faster uh, he starts running out of oxygen um, and try as they might his lungs can't keep can't keep up so what happens well all of him starts running out of oxygen the muscles 
um, the organs as well as the brain. Uh, now normally brain takes precedence so body would downregulate and he would um, go to some kind of uh, tempo where he could survive but that's not what happens his body is not like that so it goes on the muscles they take as much oxygen as they can because he just wants to go forward faster and the oxygen level gets lower and lower it gets dangerously low and eventually it's not enough to sustain his uh, his brain activity and he just drops like a brick he just drops like a brick right to the floor um, but in his case because all of his, every part of his body is really now acting completely only with the goal of getting to the finish line. So his muscles still keep going. They don't even care that the brain's not sending signals. They still go. So he's lying on the floor now, drooling out of the side of his mouth. Um, and he's kicking at the ground. All the muscles are still using whatever little bit of oxygen they can scrounge out of his blood. Um, and this whole thing is too much for the heart. So that gives out as well and the guy dies in a couple of minutes the other runner you know um, after a couple of seconds passes the unconscious guy and wins now <coughs> why do I think this is a fair analogy well because that is exactly uh, th this we have seen how the free market deals with the future and deals with predicting the future it does so terribly really really badly and the theory of people advocating for unregulated free markets and I'm really I mean I'm putting emphasis on unregulated um, because obviously with regulation what you're trying to do is probably surmount some of these issues is they're trying to say that if we're doing it as efficiently as we can right now and we just do that throughout time then we'll get to the best boss possible goal right um, and they suggest that if at any point something happens that interrupts um, the current kind of way that we efficiently do things then we'll just go and do it a slightly different way but we'll still always try to go for maximum maximum efficiency with competition and it'll all work out um, but it won't at some point uh, there will there can be a problem like the guy had not enough oxygen um, and all of the parts of the system are still struggling for that same resource and there's no regulation in place to manage this problem efficiently so the guy collapses the human body doesn't have a market for oxygen it has regulations in place for oxygen um, and so what you have in the end is this guy really succumbing to the fact that his entire body was basically living in a time window that was about the next 10 seconds um, and at when he was running the race at every point until he fell he was definitely the most competitive of all the people on the field right he was the fastest he was way ahead of everyone else the problem was he was basically doing that by um, by pushing his body past its own limits and by thereby ensuring his downfall in the long run. It was just that in the short run, because it still had enough resources available, it worked out. Um, and the problem is, <coughs> so uh, w what are these resources? Well, we have natural resources, obviously, and we have um, the so-called human resource. And both can be exploited past the point um, of uh, past past their availability basically uh, natural resources you can exploit just by using them all up and then eventually you get to a point where there's no oxygen or no oil left and because he was never thinking of an alternative beforehand he was just trying to be as competitive as he could be with what was at hand at that stage um, there was really after that no time to change strategy or do anything about it um, and if you're going to tell me that speculation takes care of that because speculation is so forward-looking um, then I mean just look at speculation uh, it really doesn't work very well uh, and it certainly doesn't work anywhere past five or ten years even if we have a really good understanding of what's coming for us um, 
And so, I mean, obviously, if you looked at this race, then of the two runners, really, uh, as an overall strategy, the runner that was conserving um, the resources was the more efficient one. And the other thing I wanted to mention about resources is the human resource, which I've talked about in a couple of my previous videos, which you can exploit um, past its prime by putting too much stress on people, by basically pushing them to the breaking point until they can no longer um, take it. And that will, of course, um, cause a kind of chain reaction, as in it affects their families, it affects the way they raise their children, and like with the body if one part starts breaking down it's going to have effects all throughout the body it doesn't matter if you're the brain and you think you're fine because you just you know it's just the liver that's dying you're you're not fine it's going to be your turn soon enough um so by damaging society in the long run by damaging the body of human civilization uh we are we are also kind of working our way towards a situation where the knock-on effects of this damage will be so considerable that we may not know how to undo the damage. Uh, where was I going with this? Um, so then once you've once you've looked at this this runner and the resources um, the strategy of going full out wasn't in fact a better strategy. It looked that way at the beginning of the race. If you were an observer looking at the race and you saw this guy sprinting up ahead, you would have thought that's a great strategy. That's that's clearly he's he's winning by a mile. Um, but really it was not a very good strategy. And you can only tell that once he's dropped dead of exhaustion. Now the problem with the analogy to the real world is that um, there's this kind of um, other little thing which is obviously that you don't have to stick with your runner um, if you're one of the runners I don't know blood cells or something if you're a worker in that runner then you can switch your allegiance or the runner can change his strategy in mid race as well so if you have different if these runners represent different systems as um, as practiced in different nations then either you as one of the body's components can actually switch uh, to a different runner or your runner can noticing that it's falling behind switch its strategy um, and both of these kind of don't make the analogy work that well anymore because well actually the strategy a runner could change but obviously um, parts of your body can't really go to a different runner but so I mean that's basically I think what has happened um, we had all of these different competing ideas and we've now had uh, one system which by over exploiting everything that it touches and by really by really squeezing the uh, the essence of both uh, our natural resources and the essence of uh, human civilization out and really uh, causing very much irreparable damage um, has just been been that much faster with that that runner was over exploiting his resources um, and because everyone else saw him winning they all changed to run like him or if they didn't um, then their productive capacities would try to escape and uh, join one of the other runners that was seeming to be so successful in the long run that means that if that analogy is correct and these runners start falling over we won't really have an alternative left to go to this will be um, a pretty much a total catastrophe and to like the runner once once you go unconscious from lack of oxygen and you fall to the ground especially if at that point you're still trying and just like the economy always when things go really bad it goes into overdrive trying to save itself and save the system if that goes on for a bit too long and you get brain damage you get civilization brain damage then at that point uh, any solution that you attempt will be incredibly difficult so if we get civilization brain damage 
by causing significant global warming, which is going on, and which, I mean, we, you could say it's already pretty likely that we're going to get uh, a bad case of global warming, but it could be quite catastrophic. Then that's something which, uh, which even if we put all of the world's resources into for a generation or two, we won't be able to reverse. Um, we don't have that ability. Uh, and we have the ability to prevent it, but because we refuse to act in a way that takes into account more than the supposed efficiency and competitiveness of our approach at this very second, because we refuse to think about where we're going or how we're going to get there, rather we're just thinking about how we can do the next two steps as quickly as possible, that's why we're running into that situation. And once we're on the ground, we may not be able to get back up. That's the sad truth. Uh, it And it, I think it's a combination of things, and I don't know what, what will... I mean, obviously, lots of things could change. People could people could say we've had enough and there could be a real turnaround but if there isn't then something eventually I think will give uh, it may be it may very well be environmental um, I mean that's I, almost just a matter of time because global warming is real and it is uh, it is gathering pace um, also we're gonna have problems with water and other resources but I think global warming is probably the big one there um, but societal could uh, be just as likely to be kind of uh, the thing that brings us down. Uh, if we end up with a society that, for all of these reasons, becomes internally so dysfunctional, um, then it only takes a little push to bring it all falling over. And I saw a little thing on Young Turks today. 65% uh, of Americans don't have a thousand dollars to cover emergency costs. Um, what does that mean? That means that if there was any kind of larger catastrophe, 65% um, of Americans would overnight basically be without any options. And there's that saying, two cool sayings. Uh, the thin veneer of civilization, which is a good one, and the other one is... Um, and I'm going to paraphrase, I can't remember who said it either. Um, society is only, is only uh, lunch and dinner away from, uh, from collapse, something like that. But basically the idea is if, you don't, if people don't get fed for a day, if it's enough people, then society is gone, civilization is gone because they're going to panic, they're going to freak out, and they're going to bring down everything. Uh, and once it's down, it's not going back up in a hurry. So, that's really my analogy. I don't know if you liked it uh, or not. Um, you might, you can obviously find lots of things to criticize in it. And you can, you can um, contest my, my, um, my idea that there is no real such thing as long-term regulation in a free market. And I know many free marketeers suggest that the free market is great at uh, using speculation uh, to regulate itself in the long term. I really haven't seen any of that. I, I can't say that I've ever seen the free market do a good job of, uh, of predicting what's going to happen 10 years down the track, uh, much less 50. And I think global warming is an ideal example of this. If we leave that up to the free market entirely, it's going to be too late. It's going to be way too late. Anyways, guys, I'll see you all later. Church of SDFU.